It stars um, George Clooney and Julia Roberts, and they kind of have a chemistry beforehand anyway because they played in lots of movies, Ocean Eleven and all that good stuff. But he plays in this movie, um, Money Monsters, he plays a smug and slick pundit. He has a financial TV show, and on one of his last shows, it was Julia Roberts' last show, and she's his producer, and it's her last show, and he doesn't know that yet. So he's like being like his usual slick self, and he's giving her a hard time about where he wants to stand because he's in his little studio now. And unbeknownst to Julia Roberts and him, a delivery fellow gets in, and he has a gun, and he has a vest with explosives on it, and he's more than upset, and he wants to actually go after George Clooney because he lost $60,000 on his financial advice. He, he wants to know why. Now, of course, now George Clooney is freaking out because he's used to being the star and smug as he is. He's saying, well, it's a algorithms and it's a glitch in the system and this guy's not buying this at all. And he's got his hand on that button to see if that vest will explode. And uh, Julia Roberts, because he's still got that thing in his ear, is trying to say, be calm, be nice to him. This is a serious thing now. You're not the genius that you think you are. So he finally calms down, he tries to talk to the fellow as a human being, and what ensues is nerve-wracking and crazy, and it's being watched now by millions of people, so half of those millions of people are saying, oh yeah, we got screwed watching these financial oh, no. guys on TV also. <laughs> so does he kill George Clooney? Does he kill Julia Roberts? Does Julia Roberts actually quit and leave him alone? What happens? Does she attend his funeral or does she attend his next show? This you have to come in and watch, and in order to see what happens, you've got to come into the Monroe Free Library and take out our DVD. My movie is called Detroit 187, and if you've ever seen me in the past, you know I like those cop shows, and this is a cop show. The main character was a character on The Sopranos, Michael and Imperioli. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he does a masterful job in this particular series. But besides being a cop show with interesting murders that happen and having to be solved, you actually see the state of Detroit in modern day. Uh, we all know Detroit has had a lot of problems, and it's a shame to see a beautiful city and how uh, many abandoned buildings there are. And in fact, that is the backdrop of the story, and you're intended to see the state mm -hmm. of Detroit in this series. That is part of the series. Um, I'm going to give you a spoiler because I thought that Michael Imperioli was so cute that I wanted to see pictures of him when he was younger. So sometimes when I'm watching a DVD, I have my iPad near me, and I look at a character to see if I can find images. And I happened to see that he had two sons. And ultimately in the show, he, there's a mystery around him, he was in New York, and now he's in Detroit, and there's a mystery about that. And he has a son, you find out. And now the son's going to visit toward the end. And when the son came, my husband all of a sudden said, holy moly, that kid looks just like him. And I had just happened to read about him and realize, in life, that is his son. And oh, his son cool. does this great job. So when the kid comes into the, the picture, you'll know that's his real son in real life, too. But I highly recommend it, not only because it's a, just a darn old good cop show, but because you get to see Detroit in a way that you'd have to live there to know. Um, so this is being processed. It's great. I highly recommend it. Where can we get this all this great stuff, Carol? Well, I'm thinking you can come into the Monroe Free Library and, and check it out. Burns away.